It's been over three weeks since I last did a video on the Pimax Crystal. And why the delay? Well, I've been waiting for some updates. If you missed my previous videos, go and check them out. Link in the notes below. There are quite a few deliverables still outstanding on the Pimax Crystal. Well, I've been fortunate enough to have access to some of their pre-release or beta software. And in particular, I've been testing out the automatic IPD and eye tracking functionality in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And for those that have already got or ordered the Pimax Crystal, and for those still waiting in the wings, the biggest question to be answered is when can we expect the release of this functionality? Well, the answer is I don't know exactly, but my best guess at this time is in about two to three weeks. And whether it'll include all the items listed above, again, I don't know. I'm not privy to that information. You're watching the SimHanger channel. My name is Mark. Thank you very much for watching. And let's get started. The functionality of Auto IPD and eye tracking applies across the board. But to put this video in context, this is a Flight Sim channel. So the focus will be on Microsoft Flight Simulator in this video. I'm using the third party application Pimax XR Runtime for the Crystal, as opposed to running in Steam VR. Massive thanks to Matt, the developer. And to enable eye tracking, and prior to starting up your sim, make sure you check the box Allow Use of the Eye Tracker Pimax Crystal. I'm using this in conjunction with the OpenXR toolkit, which we'll touch on later. The next step is to enable and calibrate eye tracking in the Pimax Crystal. In the Pimax software, make sure the crystal is on, and then we're going to head to Device Settings. Once we select that, a submenu appears, and then check the box Eye Tracking, and it will automatically switch on the Auto IPD adjustment. The Auto IPD works perfectly, and every time you put on the headset, if necessary, you'll hear the motors whirring away as it changes the distance between your lenses to give you the best clarity. Once you've initially enabled eye tracking, you need to calibrate the eye tracking system. You'll then be presented with this graphic. If this is your first time to calibrate, ignore the little dots. But as you move the headset around on your face, so the eye positioning will change in the graphic. Position the headset so both eyes are central. And you'll need at least one of your controllers to calibrate. To ensure you calibrate correctly, you should be looking directly ahead of you. And keep your head still at all times, and just move your eyes at the various dots that appear. The calibration is a two-stage process. Firstly, look at the dots on a black background. And once you've completed that, it will change and do exactly the same thing, but on a white background. This is so it can track your eyes in different brightness levels. Remember, keep your head still, or your eye tracking won't be right. It's a short process, you've watched it in real time. And then to check the calibration, look at the individual dots, do that first clockwise, and now anti-clockwise. May appear to be an oversimplistic method, but it does work, and it works very well. My only recommendation is do this at least twice, to ensure your eye tracking is as accurate as it can be, but it's a good idea periodically, from time to time, go back to the calibration process just to check your eye tracking settings have been retained. To put eye tracking to the test, I've loaded up in A2A's Comanche 250, fairly complex aircraft. I'm at Pilot Plus's add-on airport Bristol International with AI traffic enabled. My in-sim settings are a combination of ultra, medium and high. And I'm not using DLSS for this test, I'm using the TAA mode. The weather is abysmal, so a good test for the system. Eye tracking is not yet enabled. Let's bring up the OpenXR toolkit first, so we can do that. Current settings are shown in my previous videos. I'm using a resolution of 3500 by 4142. We already have the option for fixed foveated rendering in the application. By enabling eye tracking, we've changed that to dynamic foveated rendering. I'm going to change my setting from off to preset. A submenu appears and I have the option to turn on eye tracking. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume you're familiar with foveated rendering and the difference between fixed and dynamic. The mode is set to quality and the pattern is set to wide. If you set the mode to performance or the pattern to balanced or narrow, 
that further decreases the visual fidelity and to a large degree eliminates the benefits of the Pimax Crystal exceptional display, which I assume is the very reason you purchased it, and unless you're planning to do a hardware upgrade, you'll have spent a lot of money on a headset and not get the benefit. You do need a medium to high level PC to get the benefits from this Pimax Crystal. And as commented in my previous videos, the graphic fidelity and colors are stunning. Eye tracking itself will not give you a performance uplift, but the fixed foveated rendering has about 10% on the preset. And now, just as I move my eyes left and right or up and down, the system is doing its best to provide the best resolution in the direction I'm looking rather than just in the center. With the preset, I wasn't sure eye tracking was working because it was working so well. I did confirm it in a separate test with a custom setting turning resolutions right down. A lot more artifacting and culling was visible, obviously. And as I was putting less load on the system, so I got an FPS increase, but the visual penalty was just a little bit too much for me, so I reverted back to the preset. Well, I can confirm that eye tracking is working very well in the Pimax Crystal and in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Using the foveated rendering facility with a fairly large inner ring, provides the opportunity to lift performance, especially for those systems that are just on the edge, without unduly compromising in terms of the amazing graphics and clarity that the Pimax Crystal can bring. The visuals that you're seeing are directly from the VR mirror, and what you're seeing is not as good as what I'm experiencing and seeing in the VR headset directly. Plus this video is at 1440p. It's one of the hazards of recording in VR. By switching to an external view, it's a little easier to identify the drop-off in terms of resolution and some artifacting towards the edge of the image. However, none of this is visible in the headset, unless you turn the outer ring resolution right down. I'm looking forward to Pimax delivering on the outstanding issues, and in particular for me is the AMD compatibility. On loan and with the compliments of Wired to Fire, UK-based computer company I featured on the channel previously, I now have ready for testing a system featuring DDR5 memory and the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Very keen to see how that's going to perform with the Pimax Crystal. And of course I'll be testing it on the monitor as well and possibly the Pico 4. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Stay well, see you soon, and bye for now.